Thanks, Peter. Um, there was a man upon the stair. They said the man just wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish that man would go away. A talk that you start during tea time doesn't exist and drastic action is required. So I'm going to distill this to three main messages about pulmonary hypertension and left heart disease because you've had such a good introduction. But if you want to know more about pulmonary hypertension, the PHSANZ meeting all day in October, have a look on the website, it's really good. Now, the important thing here, um, David Playford from Perth was going to give this talk and I'm a, a last minute fill-in and Kevin and David prepared the slides that I'm going to show except for the last couple. And uh, point one is they've done a deliberate error on the first slide. Fancy showing a slide saying pH is a mean PAP of over 25 when you're one of the people that actually bumped it down to 20. Um, I think you've seen why it's been bumped down to 20 because every other variable abnormal is two standard deviations above the mean and, and that's 20. But lest you fear that your pulmonary hypertension clinics are now gonna be absolutely swamped because the criterion has dropped so much, there are actually only 7% more cases. So if you define pulmonary artery hypertension as a mean PAP over 20 and a PVR over three, there are actually not that many more cases because most people with a PVR over three do have a mean PAP over 25. And, uh, and Jeff actually showed why the definition has been changed because it's prognostically important. The, the other thing on this slide that's really important and Tina Adarini skipped over it a bit this morning is that if you've got left heart disease, then obviously if your LA pressure is 10 higher than normal, your PA pressure has to be at least 10 higher than normal because it's like a bath with a plug still in. It will overflow back into the pulmonary circulation. The big question is, is the pulmonary artery in that situation just a passive conduit of the back pressure or does the pulmonary circulation clamp down and vasoconstrict in response? Because if it's just passive back pressure, the only way you can treat that is to treat the left heart disease. But if there's a component of pulmonary artery reactivity as well, then you might benefit the patient's right ventricle by reducing that component by treating the pulmonary vasculature with a drug. So how do you tell whether someone's actually just got left heart disease or they've got left heart disease with pulmonary vasoreactivity or pulmonary vasoconstriction. And the only way you can tell for sure is by measuring the diastolic pressure gradient. And what's that? That means you measure the PA diastolic and you measure the wedge and you subtract one from the other. And it makes plenty of sense because if there's only passive backfill, the PA diastolic and the wedge are gonna be exactly the same. But if there's constriction of the pulmonary circulation, that's gonna drive up the PA diastolic. So the only way to tell between the two is the PA diastolic minus the wedge, is it more or less than seven? If it's less than seven, you just have to treat the left heart. If it's more than seven, you can consider treating the pulmonary circulation as well. Now, how common is that? If you've got pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease, what proportion of people have a pulmonary vasoreactivity component? The answer is 13%. Now that mightn't sound like much, but given that pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease is over 90% of all pulmonary hypertension, this group of combined post and pre actually outnumber the idiopathics that Helen was talking about by 10 to one. So it's a diagnosis worth making because it really makes a difference to patients. So the first point I wanted to make is about the hemodynamics and how you tell. The second point I wanted to make is this one, and this is just staggering, isn't it? Um, and, and Jeff, this is, you know, the red bar is the pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease, another of Jeff's studies from the Armadale study. The green bar is respiratory-related pulmonary hypertension, and they swamp everything else. And Jeff showed that the prevalence of pulmonary hypertension initially estimated at 18 per million, now 320 per million. What's changed? It's actually the left heart disease. Idiopathic PAH is 18 per million. The red bar is 300 per million. So it's a, you know, a much, much bigger problem. It's not only more prevalent, it's the worst type to have. Okay, So the black bar there is the survival and it's the worst type to have because not only do you have pulmonary hypertension, you've also got left heart disease. So there are lots of things you can die from. 
Um, Jeff's gone through the Netto database and so I won't go through it again, uh, but suffice it to say that the left heart diseases that can lead to the pulmonary hypertension are a, a mixed bag. There's ventricular problems, valvular problems and congenital problems. And whichever one you look at, the message is the same that if you've got LV systolic dysfunction or diastolic dysfunction or valvular disease, if you've got pulmonary hypertension, you do substantially worse. So it's really worth looking for. The same is with aortic regurgitation, with mitral regurgitation. And so the only th from a pulmonary hypertension point of view, the only thing we're really trying to treat is those people who get the slide on the bottom right, the histology. The top left is just a normal pulmonary artery, but there's back pressure. The bottom right is where the back pressure is accompanied by a pulmonary vasoconstrictor response, and they're the ones that need different treatment, and they're the ones that you need to do the diastolic pulmonary pressure gradient on to find out who's got what. Just a word on echo, and Helen did touch on it briefly. If you if you got you doing an echo and you find a TR jet of 3.0 or 4.0 or 5.0, a TR jet that you think is abnormal, and you think to yourself, well, 95 times out of 100, this is going to be left heart disease, but I've really got to make sure I don't miss the one that's the idiopathic one or the one that's got the ASD. How do you best tell whether it's left heart disease or not? Well, Greg Scalia invented this, this very clever ratio called EPLA, for which you need the TR jet and the E to E wave, the E to E prime ratio. But another, probably a sort of simpler glance at thing is the LA volume. If the LA is big, it's left heart disease. So sort of if you're in the echo lab and you're doing someone and the TR jet's 3.4 and you say, is this left heart disease or is it not? Just look at the LA volume. If the index is over 35, it's left heart disease. Okay, that's just a sort of, it's not sophisticated, but it's very practical and it works. The third point, the last point is this one. This is a paper that just came out a couple of weeks ago. Jacob Cow is a, a brilliant young intern at Prince Alfred Hospital and he wrote this paper uh, when he was working in our lab. And this is, a this is, sorry, this is depressing, okay? This means, let me be philosophical for a moment. Okay, we like to treat people. Okay, that's my philosophical point. But don't treat someone if it's going to make them worse just because you can. And pulmonary hypertension with left heart disease is a disaster, okay? Because if you treat them with the drug that you think will work, you'll make them die. And you've got to have the courage to say, you have a disease I cannot treat, okay? So this is what Jacob found. Here's the good news. This is a meta-analysis of every paper published about treatment of pulmonary vascular disease in people with pulmonary hypertension. And you can see if you look at the surrogate markers, pulmonary vascular resistance, the walk distance, or peak oxygen consumption, everything favours treatment, okay? But what actually happens to the patients? They die. So all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, heart failure worsening, all favour placebo. Okay, now, the confidence intervals all overlap one, but you're hardly going to give a $35,000 a year drug to someone when placebo's a little bit better, okay? So there are two big messages here. Message one is surrogate markers are surrogate markers. Okay, you've got to be really careful with surrogate markers, and I think we as a pulmonary hypertension community got it a little bit wrong by getting drugs licensed on six minute walk distance alone, but that's a different story. Um, and if you've got a patient with pulmonary hypertension and left heart disease, so a big LA or a low diastolic pressure gradient, please don't, you know, th I, I've got to say, nine pulmonary hypertension clinics out of 10 look at them and say, you've been referred to me, we're the expert, We've got to give you something because you've been told there's nothing else and you're coming to us. You're, we're about the sixth doctor you've seen. And we can't simply say, well, there's nothing for you. Um, but you have to say there's nothing for you because the pulmonary vasodilator drugs kill you. Um, so we're, we've been emasculated or effeminated or agenderated um, by these data. But unfortunately, the data are the data. So if someone's got pulmonary hypertension with left heart disease, you just have to treat their left heart disease. You can't treat their pulmonary hypertension primarily. 
So take-home messages, left heart disease is by far, by far the commonest cause of pulmonary hypertension. It's a heterogeneous group with a poor prognosis, which has been well rehearsed by others. Regardless whether it's HEFREF, HEFPEF, AR, AS, MR, MS, the prognosis is worse if you happen to have pulmonary hypertension. This is the most important one of all. Pulmonary vasodilators do not help patients with PHT due to left heart disease. So if you're looking for a breakthrough that will help the world, this is the group to work on. But early detection with treatment of the left heart disease, that's essential to prevent a precapillary component which will just make things increasingly worse. Thank you.